Trump would invite China to make vehicles in the United States. Um, Trump's saying he would even increase the tariffs as high as 200% on each car to prevent the Chinese EV makers from, you know, trying to bring those cars into the country. It's eventually going to be profitable for Ford and GM and Stellantis to make electric vehicles. It is profitable for Tesla, Volkswagen, Volvo, BYD, Hyundai, and Kia. Okay, they can all make electric vehicles profitably. Why can't the big three U.S. companies? Hi, I'm David with EV World News. And today I'm back in studio with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going, Bill? Oh, I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Anyways, so Trump would invite China to make vehicles in the United States. Biden bows out of presidential race. Um, I don't know that Biden wouldn't invite, you know, Chinese EV makers to make so. So part of the idea of putting the 100 percent tariff on all these Chinese products is, hey, if the product's going to be sold here, we want it made here. OK, because you look at how what Hyundai is doing. Hyundai, which is a Korean company, is kind of the leader in this and that they're a, next year they ought to output 300,000 EVs out of their plant in Georgia. They're already manufacturing. They just finally, you know, started the rolling EV9s off the lot there that are now eligible for the $7,500 tax credit. Now, Trump has promised that on day one, as president, he will sign an executive action repealing the mandates, the federal mandates. Those have no effect on what we were talking about earlier with the California mandates and the 13 states that have allied with California on that. But I'm big on states' rights. Those states have absolutely the right to do that if that's what their people want, okay? Now, I don't think at the federal level, the mandates really serve as much purpose as people like, I think they get blown out of proportion because the people don't realize how much EVs are going to take over anyways. So whether we have mandates or not, it's eventually going to be profitable for Ford and GM and Stellantis to make electric vehicles. It is profitable for Tesla, Volkswagen, Volvo, BYD, Hyundai, and Kia. Okay. They can all make electric vehicles profitably. Why can't the big three U.S. companies? So to me, that's if, all, if six other companies can do this, why is it that the big three American companies can't do it? You have to look at that. It's like, hey, um, and they're going to, and they're doing it in the United States. Uh, that's a big piece. Now, I can also think of other companies that aren't profitably making vehicles. Rivian and Lucid are perfect examples. Okay, that aren't profitable at making passenger vehicles profitably. Will they ever be able to? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about this before we got on the show in that what Rivian has this new R2 SUV that's coming out soon. They've got 100,000 pre-orders now for it. That ought to be enough scale that they can become profitable on that vehicle. That And it's far more than what Ford and, or GM have been selling, although they're getting close. So, I mean, what was it? Total U.S. EV sales in the last quarter was like 380,000 for three months, yeah, which was an all-time record. And eventually, you're going to have people come there. But um, Trump's saying he would even increase the tariffs as high as 200% on each car to prevent the Chinese EV makers from you know, trying to bring those cars into the country. If, sure. if Trump is elected, he says he's, gonna re he's going to executive action, take executive against the mandates, okay? But what he can't do is because those were created by executive action. He's not going to go repeal the Inflation Reduction Act because he doesn't have that power. So the, the Inflation Reduction Act was a law enacted under the Biden administration. Right. And they can come by up with a new law, but it adds Congress. But Congress has to do that. So that's not something that Trump can actually do. And so I don't think you're going to take away the incentives. And like I was saying last week on the show, I think that Elon Musk um, putting money behind Trump, I, I think is a lot of it is he wants to ensure that, you know, things like that keep going and uh, they want to make uh, Elon part of uh, at least an, an official government advisor. I don't see that happening. You, you're seeing reports where people are speculating that uh, that's only going to, you know, only going to hurt. I, I've, I've seen some crazy ones like he would put Larry Fink in the administration. I don't know that people would be too happy about it that or or jamie Dimon. jamie Dimon might actually be a good one but the larry fink one i don't know what to think about that one that, that's that's black rock okay and and really 
BlackRock, I mean, Larry Fink's quite possibly the most powerful business person on the planet. How many, how many trillion dollars do, does BlackRock control? It's like 30 trillion. It's, 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 it's crazy how big it is. But you know, one of the things that BlackRock has been as being having such a control over companies, they've been really big on pushing um, DEI and uh, the companies reducing their carbon footprints. You know, so in terms of, you know, from the green energy perspective, Larry Fink has been, you know, pretty big on trying to promote it. He's taken away financing for oil. You know, so there's a lot of things that he's done that dis despite things, it's just that a lot of people see him as uh, the shadow government. The shadow government, yeah. Well, you have that kind of power, it would be pretty tempting to find opportunities to wield it. So, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, Larry, if you're listening, you know, I, I could be bought for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Larry I, I, can write a big check. I know Larry can yeah, write a big I, check. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and not, not that EV World couldn't use that because we seriously need to find opportunities to grow and spread the word. Oh, and can you just see that EV World brought to you by by BlackRock? <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh. Well, at that point, I, at that point, I will be happily emeritus retired. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.